Okay, we finished calculating the price elasticity of demand. Now let's look at how that price elasticity changes over the demand curve. In this case, we're using a straight line demand curve because it makes life a little easier. Okay, but we have a straight line demand curve conceptually extending all the way from one axis, the price axis, all the way to the quantity axis. When we're looking at a straight line demand curve, how does the price elasticity of demand change as I move down or move up the curve? The key is first to identify the midpoint of that demand curve. Maybe you did that in geometry back in the 10th grade. We find the midpoint of the demand curve and then we address the range above that point and the range below that point. For prices up here in the upper half of the demand curve, let's say from point A to point B, two prices in the upper half of the curve. Whenever we calculate the price elasticity of demand, you remember that? Percentage change in quantity over percentage change in price. The percentage change in price, because you're dealing with large numbers up here, relatively large, is going to be pretty small. And the percentage change in quantity, because you're dealing with quantities down here now, from 1 to 2 or 2 to 4, those percentage changes are going to be pretty large. So when you calculate this price elasticity in this upper half of the curve, your price elasticity of demand will always be greater than 1.0, and now I'm talking absolute value. Ignore the negative sign. We're going to ignore the negative sign for a while, okay? We'll remember it, but, but we're not going to write it. Anytime you calculate the price elasticity in the upper half of the curve, the coefficient for the price elasticity of demand, the number you calculate, Ignoring the negative sign is always going to be greater than 1, 1 1.2, 1.4, 1.18, uh, whatever, okay? And any time that coefficient is greater than 1, we say that the demand is elastic. Now what that also means is this. Any time you change the price in this range, let's reduce the price, as a result of that, your total revenue that you receive is going to increase. Remember total revenue, price times quantity? Anytime you reduce the price in the elastic range, your total revenue will rise. Anytime you increase the price in the elastic range, total revenue will fall. They move in opposite directions. That's the elastic range. Okay? Let's look at the other half. What about down here? In the inelastic range, same calculation, right? Percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price. Same calculation. But now you're going to be dealing with relatively lower prices, smaller numbers. So those changes are going to be rather large. From $4 to $3, that's a pretty large percentage change. If you were going from $100 to $99, it's pretty small. But you're out here with low prices. You're in the bottom half of the demand curve, and relatively higher, greater quantities. So now, when you go, let's say, from point C to point D, same calculation, you're going to find that the price percentage change is going to be relatively large compared to quantity. And as a result, anytime you calculate price elasticity in the lower half, it's going to be less than one in its absolute value when you ignore the negative sign. So anytime our coefficient for the price elasticity of demand is less than 1, ignoring the negative, we say by definition that demand is inelastic. And, continuing on, anytime in this range we reduce the price, we will see our total revenue also declines. And if we raise the price, we will see that our total revenue increases. Think about that last point with me for just a second. If they really need it bad, right, inelastic demand, when you raise the price, they're going to keep buying it, you're going to make more money. All right? We want to keep it clear whether we're operating in the elastic or inelastic portion of the demand curve. All right, we've got
got the basics. We've covered the elastic range and the inelastic range of the demand curve, the top half, the bottom half on a straight line curve. A point of interest. Let's look at the very middle of that demand curve. The midpoint right here, which we could find geometrically, all right? This is the midpoint of the demand curve. That means at this point, the elastic range changes into the inelastic range. That is, at this price, whatever price that is, there is a price out there that if the price falls low enough, that is below this level, you enter into the inelastic range of demand. And above that price, you move into the elastic range. What does that mean? When you get into the elastic range, it means the change in consumption or quantity bought is a greater percentage change than any given percentage change in the price. Uh, if you want to think of it this way, elastic demand means the price is suddenly getting to the point high enough that it's starting to impact buyers and make a, a more significant uh, impact on their decision to buy. If you lower your price low enough, you move into the inelastic range where price becomes, again, low enough that it's not quite as significant a factor in the behavior of the buyers. But let's go back for a minute to the midpoint. Right here at the midpoint of the demand curve, we can calculate the price elasticity of demand at any one point on the curve. We won't go into it right now, but at this midpoint, that coefficient for the price elasticity of demand is not greater than one and it's not less than one. It is exactly equal to 1.0 in absolute value. All right. Likewise, if you take any two prices that are equidistant from the midpoint, if you were to take the measure, the coefficient for the price elasticity of demand for two prices that are the equal distance, same distance from the midpoint, you would again get a coefficient, the percentage change in quantity over percentage change in price, for those two prices would be equal to 1.000 in absolute value. All right? That's the significance of that midpoint. Also, what about total revenue? If you are dealing with unitary elasticity, not inelastic demand, not elast elastic demand, but what we call unit elastic demand, that if you change the price, you reduce the price, or you increase the price, either one, your total revenue will not rise or fall. Your total revenue will not change. The triangle delta means change. In this case, when you change the price in this unit elastic demand, you get no change in total revenue. Quick example, if you charge $10 and sell 9 units, but then you drop the price to $9 and you sell 10 units. In that case, your total revenue, 10 times 9 or 9 times 10, price times quantity, your total revenue didn't change. That would be indicative of a change in the unit elastic uh, range of demand. All right? Good enough.